Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different Square YouTube channel. I hope you all out there are having a wonderful day like me and if not, you better be manifesting, planning and preparing for a better one because it's surely coming to you all for sure. If this is your first time to my YouTube channel, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave. I have to give you a little bit of background about me. I'm an author, motivational speaker and CEO of my own business. Third Eye Entertainment LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So again, if this is your first time, welcome to my channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave. And if this is more than your first time or second time back, welcome back. I'm happy to have y'all guys back. Um, happy hump day to you guys. It's Wednesday. Yay! I, I gotta give me a cowboy, a bell, or something to make a little noise. <laughs> Uh, so it's Wednesday, you know, on Wednesday I drop my uh, podcast interviews I do with a, a dope uh, podcast hope. These collaborations uh, are awesome. I'm having a wonderful time meeting and greeting with other people all across the world. And so uh, I'm here dropping you guys another one with another dope interview I did uh, with one of my fellow um, entrepreneurs. He's from Texas as well. He represents D-Town. So a little sibling rivalry between D-Town and uh, H-Town. Uh, but big shout out to the D, you know, it's all love. Um, but this one here that I'm going to be dropping is uh, with the, the dynamic host, uh, Mr. Kendrick Thomas, or Mr. KT, if you will, of the K, uh, the Daily K podcast. Uh, we did this a while back, but nevertheless, we had a lot to chop up. We talked about my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Uh, you know, again, the tailored to racism in America. We also talked about mental health awareness as well as other topics. And so without further ado and me chopping my chops a little longer than usual, let's get right into it, you guys. And then when you're done, you'll come back on and we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on in Dippy Soil, yeah? Here it is. Check it out. KTTV, this is KT and I'm coming at you live with another episode of the Daily K Podcast. And we are back. This is season seven. We've been out here in these streets for a minute, bringing this information. And tonight is nothing different. I have my first guest of season seven, Arthur, um, Houston native, man, just just a traveler, kickboxer, uh, Miss Different. How you doing tonight, Miss Different? What's up, KT? How are you? Hey, everybody. Thank you guys uh, for having me. Yes, my name is Different, spelled D-I-S-E-R-N-T. That's my name. Um, so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. What's look, up with it? I, I'm glad you are here, uh, taking a few minutes out of the schedule. Uh, look, the book, we, we got to talk about it. Like, what I read today, yes, come on, man. You read it. What you, what you think? Tell me. Look, Tell me what you look, think. Look, look, I, I can't, I can't, we're going to slide into that. I can't give them all right now. Because, oh, okay. um, but but just thinking about about the purpose of the book, the social awareness. Uh, when you're thinking about the content and the way to start off that new season, mm -hmm. let's talk about us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, uh, before we jump into things, it's been crazy mm -hmm. out here. You in the H? How have you been doing during this pandemic and staying safe? Um. Well, if it wasn't for this book or or, or me starting my business, how God work it out for you. I think I probably would have lost it. Me being a person that's just, I'm, I'm introverted, but I like being out and about within myself. I like to say to myself that I love going out and, and, and exploring by myself. So not being able to do that and being stuck in a house and, and, and not being able to go to the gym and stay focused with that. I, 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 had I not done this book, I would have left down to the road of self-destruction. And I'm so grateful for, for God for allowing me to be the, the one you know, to be anointed and be the vessel to, to carry this message and to carry this torch to take somebody who has thick, tough, alligator skin like me uh. um, to, to do this task and to bring it forth. Um, it, it, the reason why I made sure the title is, of it is, is controversial because it is controversial, the topic that we're talking about. Yeah. So make no mistake about it, you know, it's going to be controversial. Mm -hmm. um, and so then... But, I I think I think just the biggest part about that is uh like you say, staying at the house. I interview so many people who are um like around the country, different places, but not too many people in the age. So when we think about how crazy it was getting, you were seeing uh man, we were looking at the same news. We looking at the same care here. They don't get care. <laughs> but but for me, 
for me, I've lost four people this year alone. Oh, and last person is August. And so I just yeah. have to say rest to my coach, uh, Saul Solis, if you guys can see Metro Fight Club. That's my club I fight out of. So rest in peace to him, the uh, Texas godfather of the MMA. He passed away in August due to COVID. But yeah, yeah man, uh, pandemic, it was just a wake-up call for all of us. It's just a reminder, if you will, that tomorrow's not promised and, and be here one day and gone the next. And so for me, you know, with the pandemic, it just taught me it, it's time now or never to go after what's mine. And so I had to reprogram my mindset, you know, that yeah. I'm, I'm going to get rich during the pandemic or die trying. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I had this little saying I, I tell people, you know, you're either trying to have that come up like Party B or that come back like Robert D. There is no more in between, you know. No so I'm on my come up. You know, so what about you? You know, you want to come up or that come back. There's, there's Look, no the more brother, in between. The brother had a real comeback too, man. We you think yeah. about what happened with the Iron Man yeah. and all that before it jumped. That's the only type of comeback I want if I ever yeah. fall off. Man, come on now. <laughs> so just thinking about um, uh, the book, and, and before we get into that, uh, give me a little bit of background, or us for that matter, a little bit of background on you uh, and what you're currently doing here in the city now. Okay, yeah, so, you know, like I said before, my name is different. I'm from Houston, you know. I grew up in Fifth Ward, uh, but I moved all over uh, due to my childhood or my, my upbringing, if you will, around the age of 11. I ended up homeless. Um, basically, for three years, me and my family lived pillow to post. Uh, Pickett, you name it, we've been there. Um, and it wasn't until the age of five, I was around 14, I ended up being secretly placed in foster care by a family member. And around six months of being in CPS, I found out that if, you know, you aged out of care, the state of Texas would pay for your tuition fee waiver to college. So mm. right then and there, <clears throat> a light bulb went out in my head. And I just, you know, of all those years of being on the streets, I just thought, you know, let me use my street smarts to elevate my book smarts and, and take this opportunity because I saw no other way. And so what I decided was, you know, after my family actually found out where I was and tried to get me to come home, I told them I was going to stay and do that those four years in CPS, so I was on the way to college. And that's just what I did. I graduated from ELSIC on the Southwest, so shout out to the West. Um, hey, hey, Lee yeah, yeah, Yep, yep. Um, but, and, and ended up going to Sam Houston State University. I uh, got to say shout out to the Bearcats, the, uh, hey. where I was blessed, and I started an organization titled Pay It Forward. I'm actually wearing the shirt today. Anyway, they paid for it. Um, and it was an organization that was tailored to educating, mentoring, and volunteering youth in foster care as well as the youth in general who would go to different high schools speaking to them about the importance of education uh, as well as me just sharing my story. So that's where the, the seed was planted for the motivational speaking side of me. Uh, I was also blessed with the opportunity to travel abroad and study abroad. I went to Kim Young University in South Korea uh, in 2012. <clears throat> And within that opportunity, I was blessed to travel within eight other countries. So I got to go to China, Japan, all over Europe. And that's where my travel bug was planted, if you will. Um, and then by the grace of God, by uh, 2013, I got my bachelor's degree uh, with uh, in international business, as well as I have two minors in economics and business communication. I also have my minor, excuse me, my master's degree in entrepreneurship, as well as I'm a Texas real estate agent. Now I'm a newfound author as well as the CEO of my own company, Fairfly Entertainment LLP. Uh, as far as my hobbies, I like zip lining, ATV, traveling all over. I've been just about 50 countries. I love praying, meditating, reading, writing, do MMA. Uh, I love reading about astral projection and chakra healing and just, you know, very being spiritually in tune with my third eye. If you will. Um, but with that being said, KTD, uh, KT, I keep calling KTTD. But um, with that being said, all of those notches and accomplishments under my belt, it really didn't mean a damn thing. You know, on the inside, I was still dying. Uh, with all the that I've been through in my past, it, it trampled over into my adulthood, if you will. Um, me being, you know, taken out of that situation to where chaos was normal for being on the streets and you know, from pillow to post, that became normal to me, if you will. And so I was taken out of that situation, placed in foster care. I actually got placed in really good homes and very good school dishes. Uh, a Leaf was one of them. Um, and 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 for me, like I said, chaos to me it was normal. And so when I got placed into a different setting, 
it didn't feel right. And for me, it felt too good to be true. And so I got that notion, you know, oh, let me be the captain of my own ship and decide when it's time to, for it to go down. And yeah. it would be like that for me throughout the entire, you know, year, my high school years and my college years, where I would people away, sabotage, you know, opportunities and just get that really bad reputation of being a hard person to deal with. Yeah. And it was until I was around, what, 27, 26, 27, around that time, well into my adult. And um, I have all these opportunities coming towards me as far as career-wise, and I'm just wondering. I mean, it was an opportunity to where I had to, I got a chance to meet with a millionaire, and I squandered that. With those negative thoughts in the back of my, high, mm. my mind, you too ghetto, you too country, yeah. they're not going to like you. And so what I purposely did was... The imposter syndrome. Late yeah, I showed up yeah. late to that meeting and it left a sour taste in that mouth yeah. but that, that situation right there and I regret it to this day because I, I could have been famous I could have been on you know I could have li been living that good life had I yeah. got it together but that situation right there KT it taught me that it, it, it made me face the ugly truth about myself that I needed to go fix my issues before yeah. I try to do anything or accomplish anything I needed to go fix what was holding me back and so right. I just dismissed that notion that, you know, black people don't do therapy, you know, we don't yeah. talk about our issues, you know, I come up from that environment of, you know, what goes on in this house stays in this house. So and a lot of us are taught that. So in our golf is, you know, you feel, you know, shamed and embarrassed and, you know, just want to keep it private. And so I just said, bump that, I'm going to go fix my issues and get it together because I know what I'm meant to do. And so when I did that, I basically, you know, took my ass to therapy. And, and started talking you know, with my therapist and just really being getting real about my feelings and what was bothering me and my issues. And doing so, I, I thank God for that because it saved me from that path of self destruction. Had I not done that, I basically would have been, you know, another Robin Williams or Andrew yeah. Bourdain. You know, yeah. those people who, who look good on the outside got everything yeah. you want, traveling all over the world, but still, you know, they, they take it away, they decide to take it away themselves yeah. if you and so I now, to be uh -huh. man so then fast forward to that though um we we get to the book right and so yeah. looking at that and, and thinking about the shifts that you have part of the book is what if a controversial mm -hmm. paradigm shift mm -hmm. so how did that influence you uh to to come up with the book and, and what does that paradigm shift look like for people that's reading the book. Okay. So, yeah, well, picking up where I left off, about, it's, it's all thanks to my mental health, and it's also yeah. for my life, my business, just to be example for people in the black community of what not being ashamed and embarrassed about getting your health in check and getting it in order and what it can do for you. This is what it mm -hmm. did for me. So, talking with my mentor, who's, who, who's my therapist, who's become my mentor now, and talking with him, and, and him and encouraging me to turn a negative into a positive. He encouraged me to get back into writing, which was one of my hobbies, being in CPS. And in doing so, I was writing my little compositional journal, little affirmations, and being stuck in the house for the pandemic. And um, boom, May 25th, 2020 happens, the day George Floyd dies. And being from Houston, the same place he's from, he, I'm from Fifth Ward, he's from Third Ward, so we're right down the street from each other. Um, I wanted to be involved and get in, and have my voice heard in this protest. However, when the time came down to it, I couldn't because I felt I wanted my voice to be heard then longer than just in that moment of time. I wanted it to be heard long after I'm gone. And so going home later on at night, being spiritually in tune, talking with God, praying for the spirit of the sermon. <clears throat> this is what he revealed to me over time, you know, and to through different, you know, dreams and messages and talking with people, watching movies such as, you know, The Help or Amistad, uh, even, you know, books like such as The White Man's Burden or Watermelon Man. Uh, influences like that, you know, it, it helped conjure up, you know, my ideas. And so one day just writing in my journal, I just started writing, what if, what if this happened? What if George Floyd was a white man, you know, mm -hmm. who, was, who was killed by a black police officer? I just started writing questions. I started that in June 2020, and by December 2020, I finished it and reached out to my um, my my attorney. She read the manuscript. She got back with me, you know, gave me all her praises, and then asked the question, um, "What's the name of your your company, your LLC?" And I'm like, "What? Uh, I just I'm just want to write a book." And so now it's much bigger than just a book. Much bigger than just me wanting to you know get my voice out, and be heard. Uh, so that's one thing about it. When you pray for something, you gotta be 
prepared though. Not be ready. Not be ready. So that's yeah. why we say manifest plan prepare over here. Man. But with that being said, so I had to hit the ground running, you know, learning the ins and outs of forming a small business. It wasn't my intention to do to start off with a small business. I was going to go deep into real estate. Um, but again, God's plan, this is what he had planned for me, and I'm okay with it. Yeah. Um, March 2021, we come up with Third Eye Entertainment, LLC. It is a company that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which it educates, inspires, and entertains all at once. We have a model that we like to live by. It's called Manifest Plan Prepare. It is because we believe in order for those who want to achieve guaranteed success, they must, one, manifest and speak into existence what it is that they believe in their heart and that they desire, what they meant to have. But they have to speak it like no other. Remove all the fear, all the doubt, and replace it with that faith. Even if you have to fake it till you make it, you know, write it on or tell yourself, you know, constantly, whatever it is that you want, you have to get it in your mind. You have to see it before you can actually feel it, touch it. It has to be intangible before it becomes tangible. And so that's what manifestation comes from, being spiritually in tune with what you know is in your heart and you see it in your mind and you manifest it. Secondly, you move on to planning out what it is that you want to achieve in life. And once you do that, make sure, when I say plan, plan it thoroughly. Plan out, you know, if it doesn't work out, what's your backup plan? What's your extra strategy? Who's going to help you? How are you going to achieve this? What are your downfalls? That's what we mean by planning it out. You know, go ask for help when you need it. As far as prepare, when we say prepare, we mean prepare for what it is that you are about to receive. So when we say that word prepare is deeper than that. It means to get your house in order. So go prepare for yourself as far as fixing your finance. If you need to get in shape, go hit that gym. Go fix those broken relationships. Go cut those people off who don't belong in your life. Go get your mental health in order. Go prepare all of that. So whatever it is that you're manifesting and speaking into existence, when it comes to you, you will be prepared for it. You will know how to handle it and you won't squander it. So manifest, plan, prepare. And like I said, you know, with just this pandemic and it teaching us that, you know, life is short. It, it has taught me, you know, and I yeah. want my audience, people that come into Denver Squirrel, this is what you'll learn. You know, we want you guys to have that mindset. You know, I, we want that following that has that mindset that they're trying to get rich during the pandemic or die trying. You know, like mm -hmm. I said, that come up or that come back, there is no yeah. more in between. So that's what it is with us. We also provide motivational speaking services as well as talking on issues that are considered taboo, such as injustice and racism. Also talk about mental health, suicide prevention awareness, uh, domestic violence, breast cancer awareness, a child sex trafficking, LGBTQ issues, any, any issue that's considered, you know, if people turn a blind eye to, we talk about it here yeah. over at the eye in different world. We bring it to life. That's it. That being said, our first product that we have to offer to yeah. such public is my new book, What yeah. If, A Controversial Paradigm Shift. <laughs> and before I go any further, I must state that this book does include a disclaimer it's intended for a mature audience. And yeah. So that, to but that's what I was going to ask you, though. Like, that, that's what I was going to ask. When you did that, what what kind of audience? So, when yeah, you was so, like, um, I'm a businesswoman. So, before yeah. I, I get into to doing it, I do my research. And so, when I did target market analysis. And so, I found that there are four main target audiences that I'm reaching out to. Mm -hmm. Adults from the ages of 18 to 35, as well as African American community, people who care about social issues such as mm -hmm. injustice, systemic racism, as well as women. We test high in the market area because, you know, women are, it was more women than men in yeah. the universe. We didn't know. And so we run it up in the numbers. And so those, that's my target audience. But this book is meant for everybody, if you will, yeah. not just black and white, everybody all over the world. As far as what paradigm shift means to me, it just basically the shoe mm -hmm. of being on the foot, you know, taking that look in the mirror and, and being able to empathize with somebody that you can't relate to but you are trying you are attempting to so and and, and i had to make sure again like i said it had controversial before, before so you know that this paradigm shift are controversial paradigm shifts and with this book what if a controversial paradigm shift it was written to inform and encourage thought-provoking conversations about systemic racism and injustice in america um it's done through graphic and provocative illustrations yeah. it deep controversial deaths and events that have occurred in America within the African American community. The way that I have set the book up is within four main categorized paradigms. 
you have historical, political, precedent, and then hypothetical. And within those four main paradigms, I'm asking sub-paradigm questions such as, you know, what if this happened? What if that happened? Um, basically a race world reversal, like I said before, and it's just asking the question, what if this happened to you and your people in the past, and what if it was happening to you and people now? And if it's not okay, if it makes you uncomfortable and it repulses you, then why is it justified? Why is it turned by an eye to see this happening to a black person? Yeah. And not only is the book, it is, it's, again, it's going to ruffle some feathers, but feathers is going to ring some bells. The book is not only meant to make people uncomfortable or, you know, make white people mad or rub it in their face what they did mm -hmm. to us. It's more than that. This yeah. book, if you muster through it and be mature enough to make it through the last mm -hmm. paradigm, which is where I tie it all in, hypothetical paradigm, it's where I'm talking about compassion, empathy, unity for one another and mankind. Why not practice that and preach that? With us, we with, with us going through so much and personalized, you know, mm -hmm. you never know what somebody's going through when you walk past them. So why not? be kind and courteous to one another and show com compassion as far as, as opposed to showing judgment mm -hmm. based off what they look like. And, and so, so when you, when we're so, looking at uh, black reform from that stuff though, mm -hmm. do you, do you think that, that um, it's getting better and, and, and like your book? So I can say uh, this. Uh -huh. I see, I see, I see attempts. I, yeah. I can see on the commercials where they're, yeah. they're talking about supporting black businesses and being more open and, and subconscious about the things that they say. I can see that. But it's also going to take our our people that, that have, you know, I'm trying not to say the wrong thing to piss people off. So if I'm getting tripped up, I'm trying to think before I speak. That's what it is. Yeah. It's For me, it's my opinion. What's this going to take to move, move the needle as far as, you know, pushing the envelope and getting people to talk about these conversations it is, is acts like these, what I'm doing, you know, pushing the envelope because we know we, we tried the peaceful route. We tried, you know, talking about it in such a, you know, Hey, this, that, and the third, but again, it just falls on death there. So my theory is how about this? How about we do a race for reverse? Because for another reason why I wrote this book is because I'm so tired of hearing, you know, the other side saying, Oh, I don't see racism or oh, racism mm -hmm. doesn't exist. If it does, it's because you guys are still talking about it. So how about this? How about we take some of the controversial historical events and deaths that have occurred within the African-American community in America and just do a race world reverse? How about if this happened to, the, to you guys? And if it's not okay for you guys to, for you guys to go through yeah. this thing, why is it justified for the Blacks? Yeah. And, and, so, and, and then with this also, with this book, it's just an attempt to again, create that, that system. I'm because I'm tired of talking about systemic racism. I want to talk about systemic change. So it's not yeah. always, like I said, it's more than just pushing it in their face and, and pissing them off. This is more than just that. Even though it will do that, yeah. it's more than that. It's about, Man. you know, unity. And it's going to take more than just one side. It's going to take both sides because there are those close-minded black folks out there who, and, and racist black folks, I got to be real. I'm a realist. Mm -hmm. We it's, Some of us in our community, too, and it's going to take those people, you know, getting out of these feelings and just and, and coming together and talking about these issues. So I'm not just talking about whites and putting them on blast. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to everybody. And I'm well aware that systemic change doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. But what if, KT, what if this was a generation that plans to seed for the next or the next generation? Mm -hmm. So all I'm doing is trying. That would be a failure, but a try to me. Yeah. And so even if it goes nowhere fast, at least I tried. But that's how do you... I did my research, and this yeah. is very well. <laughs> this is gonna sell very well. Um, and then, so then, then, but how how do you how do you begin to have those those conversations? Like like I'm saying, we talk about it. We read the book. Mm -hmm. So I, it's my theory yeah. when people share their opinions about things like this. The uh -huh. reason why I chose the controversial route, because everybody loves a little controversy, whether they realize it or not. Yeah. When they see something they don't like, they respond to it. They they get online, they share their opinions, and then before you know it, you see somebody else coming along and sharing their opinions about it or their rebuttal. And before you know it, they're having the conversation back and forth about this, that, and the third. And so that is my theory. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this will this will push the envelope. This will spark the plug. But it. it it's my hope and prayer that it'll take off when people see this book and they get to posting about it, whether it's good or bad, people are going to yeah. talk about it. But when they, when they post in the negatively 
on it on, on Facebook or whatever, people, somebody's going to read and be like, hmm, let me see what this person's talking about. Let me go look and see. And then so on and so on. And so that's, for me, how the conversation starts. You know, just but about then, I'm talking book. about literally. What do, what do really? I say? I read the book. Mm-hmm. What, what should I take away? How do I come in and say, Mom, that I read this book and I feel like this? Like, how does that... Like, how does that conversation go in, in, in just researching it? Well, it depends on who you're having it with, first off. If yeah. you're going to have it with a person who closed mind or see it only one side of who, or who's not mm-hmm. trying to have that conversation, then don't waste your time. Yeah. I always tell people, even with this book, I, one thing I learned from number 45, the previous one, I don't acknowledge him as ours, number 45. <laughs> one thing I learned by him is you go when you celebrate it, not when you tolerate it. This yeah. man, after his four years of his, his, his behavior being in office, even after he had 25% of the U.S. adult population condoning his BS at 75 million people and, yeah. and probably have gone up since then. And so what that resonates to me as no matter who you are, what you stand for, what you believe in, what you're about, what you out there selling to the public, it's always going to be somebody to condone it that's going to that's gonna buy what you're selling. Yeah. So you go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. So for the people that want to have those conversations about these, these issues, this is there for you. The, the table is open. You come yeah. to it. But for those who don't want to have it, it's also going to expose that as well. This book this will also help expose those true feelings and natures about what they truly think about racism. Because I, I guarantee you, not a lot of people are going to be able to handle, I'm just going to give you a little taste, a little, yeah. little, 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 little ski taste. Little, little something, something. This is the first one. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it asks the question towards the year 1619, I believe. Sorry, y'all can't see that. But you see this. You see white people in shackles and chains and being sold off like they did with black people. All right? Come on, man. And so my, my whole prepare for that is is whether they're going to talk about it good or bad, they're still talking yeah. about it. They're having a conversation, so mission accomplished to push mm-hmm. the envelope to have thought-provoking conversations about yeah. systemic racism. And that's exactly what this book will do, whether it's good or bad. So if you ask the question, what made me go the controversial route? It's, yeah. the, it's that attention grabber, you know. To you get the get the get the message. Get, get you get to, get get you to think. Yeah. And, and 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 again, not only just to make you think, but also towards the end, talking about compassion and unity and and coming together as one. I have, you know, one illustration here. I'm sorry, you guys can't all see this. Why you got to go to my website and order it online with the pre-sale, and it just talks about. You know, what if mm. all of us and whites we come together and we end systemic racism? I'm sorry I can't see it see it all the way, but you know, what if? That's what it is. So it's, it's basically a word to the colorblind that I ask, you know, what if someday colorblinded, aka closed minded white people came together with open minded black people and worked on ways to combat systemic racism in America and bring in forth systemic change. So it, it's more than just, you know, dredging up, you know, painful you know, past issues and things that we went through in our past, because a lot of, you know, a lot of this that I went through, it was, it was hard for me to muster through, and, and mm-hmm. but I had to, because the dedications, and also when you look at the dedications and why I did this, I dedicated this to, you know, our ancestors that jumped from ships, picked cotton, and for our rights to vote. I did this for them as well, so that, you know, their story can also be told in a different, par- in a paradigm shift that yeah. helps some people. It may not help all, but it'll help mm-hmm. some. I've actually had people, you know, reached out to me that's on the other side, you know, that, that's mm-hmm. the white, that, that's the Caucasian people. And yeah. they're like, I like what you're doing. Keep it up. This is what yeah. needs to happen. We need these Thanks. conversations. And I've been on uh, two Caucasian guys' podcast, two white guys' mm-hmm. podcast. I love this. This, this yeah. needs to be had. It, it, it does make me uncomfortable, but it, it, it's what needs to be had. Mm-hmm. And so those type of people, you know, like say, you go, we celebrate, not where you tolerate. So when you ask that question, how do I bring that? How do I have these conversations after I read the book? Well, you share your, your thoughts and opinion, and then you just let the chips fall where they may. Trust me, it's going to be somebody who's going to respond yeah. to you. And so yeah. once you get the book, go write a review, share your yeah. opinion, you know, this, that, and the third, and then that's how the conversation will start. Man, okay. so how do, we, how do we find the book? Yeah. Yes, so how you find the book is you go to my website, differenceworld.net, it is on pre sale now for twenty dollars. The price will increase towards the end of October, so get it in good while it's now. Um, again, uh, differenceworld.net. What if a controversial paradigm shift? 
Also, I must state in, in association with if we do sell other merchandise, however, they will not be available until late October, early November. So, although it's listed on the website, it's not available yet. So, uh, just only the right now. Yeah, we started. Uh, it, 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 hey, we started this in March. And so, if you go to my website, you also see uh, the travel blog. We do, uh, I do my travel experts. I've been to just about 50 countries just before the pandemic started. And so, mm -hmm. I was going to start a travel blog as well and so i have that as well as a youtube channel and anybody out there who's listening and would like to have me on the show to talk about you know these issues you know just go to my website and, re and request me i'm free of charge i don't cost a thing well look I, I was just gonna say uh mm -hmm. i appreciate that for coming through showing the the whoever did that illustration shout out to them Cause they were in the game, uh. But but as we get ready to wrap this thing up, I just want to say thank you for, man, the work that you did with that book. I, I wish I could bring it in and just show my kids. I, I couldn't because it's a little rough. For it them. is. Now we'll it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll say this for the high schoolers: like, let them read it. But if they in elementary, yeah. middle school, I don't yeah, expect them to be in school uh, that are. Uh, they probably not gonna let this in high school either, but if they outside of high school, they they yeah. they grown enough to understand what's going on. But definitely not for not intended for the kids. Although it's set up in a childlike, you know, illustration wise, this was only the kids, yeah, you know, kids. the yeah. mm -hmm. as well as you know, my nephew. He's a part of the book. The uh, child that you see on the front cover or that's asking the questions. If you read, you you got a chance to read the book, mm -hmm. so you see him asking the questions. That's my nephew. He's also in the book trailer as well. So I want to make him them on as well um but thank you so much i want to take this time to remind you that you you were king and you got a crown on your head and you were rocking it very well i just want to appreciate you and and, and for having me much appreciative anybody yeah. out there that's listening um don't forget manifest plan prepare for what it is in life that you want and it will surely come to you i also want to say for anybody that's going through any type of depression being bullied being suicidal uh, mm -hmm. please know that whatever you went through in life it may or may not have been your fault, it may or may not have been out of your control, but somehow, some way, it's your problem to deal with, and it's on you to go fix. That's the ugly truth about that that we have to face. And once you face that and you go and fix your issues, whichever uh, tools and resources that suit you better, trust me, you'll be free as a bird. And so that's what it, that's how this book came about. That's how this business came about. When I got my mental health in check, God. God to show me the way. And so I'm just here to be a, a vessel and an example for, you know, how God can take you from the back and put you up front. With all that I've been through, you know, my story may have started in tragedy, but it's going to end in triumph by the grace of God. And so thank you for having me. Thank you to the audience out there for listening. Again, uh, differenceworld.net. Uh, you can search uh, all of my uh, social media handles on there. And uh, our especially our YouTube and our Facebook, as well as the book again. What if a controversial what paradigm? What if? Oh no! On pre show now. Whoop whoop whoop! See all that? Oh, yeah, no. yeah. Um. So yeah, that's what that's what it is. Difference world. Right. Come and learn. All right, man. That's it, y'all. Uh, welcome. Season seven. We'll just get started. So y'all make sure uh to keep it locked. I'll see y'all next Thursday. That will do it. This is KT for KT TV signing out. All right, everybody, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoy listening to my audio interview I did with the Daily K podcast. Uh, with, again, shout out to Mr. Kendrick, or KT, if you will, uh, for having me. I uh, had a great time as you guys listened in on our conversation and uh, hearing us talking about my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, and so much more. I hope you guys enjoyed the conversation. Uh, if you guys liked it, definitely show me by hitting that like button commenting sharing and subscribing to my youtube channel i definitely appreciate it and don't forget to show mr kt some love uh, by checking him out i dropped his information below in the description uh so again big shout out to him for having me uh, and again uh if you guys out there have any other podcasts 
uh, that you would like for me to be a part of, you know, shoot me a message. I, I, right at this point in time, anybody that'll have me on their show, I'll, I'll go and, and go on and talk to promote. As long as you know, and with the BS and just want to sit there and fight and argue, uh, I'll definitely, you know, come in on your show and talk with you. Um, but again, um, with that, definitely hit that like, share, comment, and subscribe. Either or, all four. <laughs> definitely would appreciate it. Uh, okay, so uh, moving on. Uh, we have a lot more coming up. Uh, this month is going to be a busy month. Uh, it's Christmas time, so I'm just trying to keep busy. Um, dropping you guys these content back to back to back. So get ready. Uh, it's coming. Tomorrow is Thursday, so I have another um, review for you guys. I think I want to do Black Adam. I seen that last week, and so I want to do uh, either Black Adam or Emancipation. I watched that last night with Will Smith. Um, so be on the lookout for that, you guys. That's tomorrow. Uh, what else we got going on in Difference Well, um, a lot, you guys. <laughs> I should just start keeping a little schedule so I can read it down with you guys. But uh, I also like to get a little part of mystery with me, and so that keeps you guys guessing and keep coming back for more. So that's why, again, you got to hit that notification and that subscribe button. So uh, when your girl drops the content and I can pop up on your timeline, you come into the Difference World and you learn about what's going on here, yeah? So uh, moving on, uh, let's do a real quick mental health check uh, before we get out of here. Uh, again, uh, I want to heavily advocate with it being you know, Christmas season or, or some, I heard somebody say the other day it's suicide season uh, and it, it, unfortunately you know it sounds harsh but it's fitting because during Christmas time uh, suicide rate is at an all-time high and so I just want to encourage anybody out there that's going through any type of mental anguish you know, suffering from the loss of a loved one like me uh, depression you know anxieties any any mental anguish, man. I don't I don't care what what the case may be. If it's, it's causing you any type of depression, you know you can't sleep at night. You sad. You can't move on in life because of that situation. <clears throat> Please just know and understand and, and heed to my words that it is okay to not be okay, but never ever ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever the case may be, and however that may suit you. Be talking with a therapist getting on medication, you know, uh, to be honest with you guys and share a little bit of my testimony, my therapist wants me to get on medication, but how I feel about that is I'm scared. I, I don't, I feel like, you know, I don't want to have to, uh, I want to turn into a, a dependency, you know what I mean? How, that's because that's how it starts when you get on, you know, dependency for pills and it leads you down to, you know, other drugs and stuff. That's how it starts. And so for me, I, I'm not ready to, you know, go down that road of getting on medication to help with my depression. But if that's what works for you out there or somebody else, then then by all means, go for it. I, I, I'm not against, you know, taking medication or you know, psychological medication. But at this point in time, I'm just not ready for it. I'm not at that point where I feel like I need it. Um, and so, but in any case, it, everybody's different, you know. So if that, that's the case for you and you feeling like you need to get on some type of psychological medication you know, keep you at ease or steady, then do so. Uh, picking up a hobby, you know, mending broken bridges, you know, cutting people off, whatever it is that you have to do to keep your mental health in check and making sure that you don't go off the deep end or possibly take anybody with you, do it. I, 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 I hate waking up and listening to the news now because it's always something, you know, sad that you hear, you know, somebody killing themselves or taking, you know, killing people and then killing themselves and, and it all happens around the holiday season. So, um, and also for anybody out there, uh, making sure, you know, again, checking on your loved ones at this time, sending them, you know, a smaller text message, hey, I'm thinking about you, hey, I love you. You know, it goes a long way. It's actually what keeps me going. You know, my family and friends, they send me these little text messages out of nowhere. And it just, you know, warms my heart. It, 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 lights, it keeps the fire lit under me. And so it helps. You know, it's the little things out there, I tell you. And so uh, make sure that you guys are doing that for your loved ones. And even if you need it, make sure you're open and vocal about it. You know, people can't read your mind. They, can't, they don't know what you're thinking until you, you become verbal about it and vocal about it. And so that is why, um, instead of me keeping it all bottled in, I'm talking about it, you know, via through vlogs, uh, on podcasts, any, any, any therapist, family members, any way that I can, um, because this this shit right here is, is for me is 
it is a lot, man, and it, it still feels unreal. But then, you know, when I look to my side and left to my right, and my mom's not there, you know, I'm reminded that yeah, she's she's really gone. And so I, I can imagine how others out there are feeling. And so with that being said, if you or you know anybody that may need these mental health resources, please share it with them. The crisis hotline number is one eight hundred. 273-8255 or you can text nine not, excuse me 988 or 741741. If you would like or prefer to go online, you can go to mentalhealthishelp.us or you can go to 988lifeline.org. Those that are outside of the US, you can go to incounseling.com. Again, that's spelled E-N-C-O-N-U-S-E-L-I-N-G.com. And again, also remember you guys. Do your own homework. Again, find what works best for you. Like I said, I've, I've laid out a number of options for you. But again, it's on you to find what works best for you. You're the captain of your own ship. And again, just remember that it's okay to not be okay, but never ever sit there and not be okay. Whatever that you're going through, it will pass. This too shall pass. Again, you have to keep telling yourself and reminding yourself you are stronger than you know. I don't want to seem like I'm rambling and I'm getting too deep into it. Get a little choked up and so just know that uh, you are not alone and we will get through this okay and so uh, moving on and with that uh, we want to close this out. I know it's some good energy I know it just came <laughs> talking about a little dark cloud but uh, let, let's focus it you know back on some positive energy you guys and so uh, with that being said uh, make sure you guys out there are going out, the, out there in your dreams excuse me, going after your dreams and doing whatever it is that you have to, to achieve that goal. Um, also, uh, don't forget, I should have said this earlier, uh, but I, sorry, a little bit. <laughs> but uh, being that it's Christmas time, you guys, and as it also helps uh, with depression, uh, for me, I've, I've noticed uh, helping others. And so uh, it's a good time to get out and volunteering and giving back to the community and, you know, getting out of your feelings and forgetting about your own problems and helping others with theirs. That also helps, you know, with depression as well as, you know, keeping you busy and occupied during the Christmas time if this is the most depressing time for you like me. Uh, so I just wanted to, you know, put that out there before I close that video and encourage you guys to get out and volunteer in the community. Uh, just do again, like I said, your own research and find what's out there, what's available out there for you in your areas, okay? And so also going back to now what I just said uh, in regards to going after your dreams, make sure you guys, in order to achieve the dreams that you meant, are you, you folks, the dreams that you are meant, damn, I'm just trying to love all day. Y'all know what I mean. <laughs> Manifest, plan, and prepare for that shit, and then it will surely come to you all. <laughs> Difference well, y'all, I'm tired, I gotta get up out of here and <laughs> come and learn. Peace. <laughs> what if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.